three, set our timing and go qualifying two for the unlimited category. now going mouth fresh super boat time the unlimited category young jacob simmons paul newman doing the navigational duties jacob simmons last year driving the group b category the massive step up into unlimited he's gone from having about 450 horsepower at his disposal to a thousand and for link engine management systems engine rebuilders sm Jake so I uh, just had word from uh, young Hughes he's gone five seconds quicker that time out than he did in qualifying round number one it is Bevan Muir coming out Andrew Clooney Andrew Clooney one of the dodgy rescue crew his father Mel up here just going, oh yeah, I know that. He's rolling his eyes, he's Mel. <laughs> so uh, Andrew Clooney doing the navigational duties here for Bevan Muir. Bevan Muir. So for Teng Tools, Toyota Finance, Valley Toyota, DC and Drilling and FPP Speed Shop. The 640 cubic inch big block Donovan, Bevan Muir, at an earlier round in the year up at Merry Merry, was pumping oil out of the engine and straight into the boat. Got a bit better at Hastings now here at Wanganui, really starting to show the sort of style and form that we are used to seeing from Bevan Muir. Normally would race in the Group A category and uh, decide this year to step up into the unlimited category and looking quite good out there at the moment for a new setup. The time will be good for Bevan Muir. 51.753. He and Andrew Clooney will be wrapped with that one. Bevan still knows that he's got to tidy a few things up out there, but it's great to see the Wicked A racing machine really starting to look the goods out there. These boats take a lot of development, a lot of work, and a lot of working out to get them A-OK. -okay. Yeah, well, we can we can see uh, Paddy Hayden down there. He did require a welder a little bit earlier. So uh, at the moment, though, it is Richard Burt in the Toyota Supra Sprint Tech boat. Joshua Gill doing the navigational duties here. The stroked 3.4 litre 2JZ GTE Toyota Supra engine. This boat was originally designed as a single seater. It is now being converted to the uh, driver navigator twin seat style jet sprint boat. And for sprinttech.co.nz, Lincoln Automatics automotive panel and paint. So 
It'll be really interesting to see how Richard Burt goes here this weekend. Uh, hasn't been seen around the tracks of jet spreading for most of this season. Been offered the drive here with the Ruben Oxfam. A good time, 51.782. And certainly not putting a whole lot of effort into it. And that's pretty much the way that we see uh, Richard Burt normally run this style of vessel. You can see the Altherm machine down there of Glen Head and Haley Todd coming off the trailer. Was world champion in the unlimited category in 2016. Glen Head last year he took off because of a fairly significant back injury. Doctors advised him not to get into the boat. So really enjoying the 2019 Mount Fresh New Zealand Jet Sprint Championship. His first run out this morning looked very, very calm. Glenn just getting into it a little bit more at the moment. A young man who uh, has stood on top of the podium, on top of the world podium. Knows that you can't win it in the early rounds. He's just getting the engine analysis into this uh, HRE twin turbo, 1750 horsepower. The jet design, 10 inch jet unit. The split is a cracker at a 30.294. Not used to seeing a split like that at this stage of the day. Oh, Glen Head really wide around that left-hander up the top part of the course. That was a dangerous line. Whoa, well, 48.974, quick time. And Glen Head picked that speed up at the latter part of that lap, but earlier on he was just tickling it along quite nicely indeed. So maybe that high 46s and low 47s that I predicted earlier might well come down beyond that. So, Kevin Roberts, Kendra Death, I had a bit of a chat to these guys when the, uh, the two Blakes were up here doing a bit of commentary work earlier, and I said to Kevin, well, you know, Kendra kept you online there, and Kendra said, actually, I was the one who got it wrong out there, so that hesitation, Kevin was right. Kevin did then rightfully point out, if you use past performance as an indicator, it would normally be Kevin uh, second-guessing himself. So these two just got to work a little bit better together. Both develop confidence in the rotation. Well, he's picked those nice lines in that transition, splitting those two islands up the front shoot there really nicely. Kendra very, very confident with where she had to go in the hairpin. Oh, can't go too wide out there. Kevy wrapped the tyres. That took the momentum out of the boat. Needs to keep that a little bit tighter in there. Later in the day, when these boats really heat up, Anybody running wide at the bottom of the track there, he's going to run up on the tyres. But Kevin Roberts, this will be a good lap for the man from the Stinger machine. And a 53.662, 53.662. So it looks like it'll be Leighton Shrek Manel in the bitches box. Normally he's been in the dog box because his wife Kelly gives him a bit of a slap upside his face and says, you get out on the couch there. But, uh, well, will it be Leighton Shrek Manel? No, it will be the Clearview machine of Paddy Hayden coming off the trailer at the moment. This will be Paddy's first run of the day. We do know that he was looking for a welder for some reason early this morning. So he missed qualifying round number one for Clearview, PSP Building Brands. Cole Hayden, his son, doing the navigational duties. Current NZ Group B champion. And, uh, well, he stepped up to the unlimited category and has been having a reasonable season stepping up into the higher performance vessels. So Paddy's first run for the day. This will be just a feeler. Still looking reasonably confident out there for this uh, opening run. Now we'll see the confidence come back in. 
knows that he's on the way home now, so we'll speed, expect to see a little bit more speed out of this run. That'll be a nice opening time there for Paddy Hayden, a very easy 53.977. Qualifying round number two of the unlimited category. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the live stream right around the world. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got some friends and family at home uh, that can't be here today, certainly go to uh, jetsprint.co.nz, follow the links and tell your friends and family to jump on to the live stream. been in a boat for over a year gets in and goes sub 50 in qualifying round number two that bodes well for a big day from the team from the link engine management system and industrial manufacturing systems wicked two now scotty doddle nicole reesby the 500 dart small block the sprint tech hull Scotty Donald took it easy in Q1. We saw him change the way he approaches the day at Hastings. Last round, he started getting quicker and quicker in the earlier part of the day. Is he gonna take that type of driving style and move that forward here today? Let's hope so, because Scotty Donald had a really good run last time out at Hastings. So let's hope that he can now get onto it, start developing the rotation, developing the speed. Yes, we're starting to see a little bit of that. Nicole Reesby keeping her man Scotty Donald on track. Oh, that is a beautiful motion through the hairpin there. Scotty Donald, after a number of years on the wheel of a jet sprint boat, really has just made a major step from the last round. Let's hope that he just continues that. It's a great package that he's got at his disposal. Plenty of power in it as well. Scotty Donald, well, 50.905. This is great to see the farmer from Featherston really starting to step up to the plate. So good run there for Wicked 2. Aaron Hansen will be out next in the Dual Tech machine. Julianne Shanks doing the navigational duties. Julianne Shanks, the contract resource management planner. Aaron Hansen, the contractor out of Tauranga. 500 cubic inch small block chev. This boat produces 800 to 900 horsepower, 8.45 units. Dual Tech Consultants and Mose Mowing. The sponsors on board here. Oh, that was a little bit ugly with that left-right combination there. Aaron will really have to sort of tidy that one up as day goes on. Oh, that was a very tight line to split the two islands up the front, shoot in front of commentary. Probably a brave line that I would prefer that Aaron doesn't take next time out. Go on the wrong 
away. Needs to recorrect it. Not too sure that they've noticed it. They're carrying on with the lap. I doubt that they have. So they're really, uh, I dare say, they think that they have finished this rotation, but it is a DNF. DNF. So Aaron Hanson, Julianne Shanks will have to go back to the course rotation map. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can see the course rotation in your books that you would have got on the way in, here's the rotation. It goes 1, 8, 3, 4, 5, 1, 11, 9, 8, 2, 1, 10, 9, 8, 3, 6, 5, 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, 1, 11, 7, 4, 5. How's that? That's quick. So uh, Aaron Hanson, Julianne Shanks got it wrong. So we are now going to go to the specialist with Baden Gray and Darren Todd for Vickers Aircraft, the twin turbo. Well, Baden, he's to right off. Got plenty of power going up the front chute into that first right-hander. He's to off big time. Opens up that line through to the other side of the track. little bit unsettled through the crosswash it's just appearing through that central islands up the front straight oh the pop the fart the flame out and that is not a good way to end that run for Baden Gray Uh, we'll get Scruffy the tugboat out on the water if we could please to uh, affect the rescue of Baden and Darren. We'll take a short break. We will be back very soon to continue with round, qualified round number two of the unlimited category. We are going back racing and it will be Rob and Ange Coley in the mouth fresh machine coming out next. The pair from Wanganui. Rob Coley, certainly one to keep an eye on. If you remember here a few years ago, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Coley with uh, 
Kelly Mandel shot the out the back of the spin-out pool, which is why we don't use the spin-out pool anymore. We finish them on track these days, but are certainly an exciting driver, one that what was racing his peak in South Australia just last weekend, so competing in the New Zealand National Series as well as the Australian National Series, so plenty of driving for Rob Coley. His wife Anne sitting in alongside him at the moment. This is a 600 cubic inch small block for Global Products Mouth Fresh Oral Care, Silk Baby and Beauty, and the Building King Limited. Well, Rob really just uh, starting to get a bit of the uh, Rob anger going on in certain parts of this rotation. And this is going to be a good time for Rob and a 51068 and just sort of did that with the fat arming it really. You know what the fat arm is there, Husey? Fat arming is, you know, when you get the blokes in the old cruisers and they've got their arm out the window while they're listening to the tunes. That is what fat arming is. So, uh... The old fat arm of a Rob Coley there, it was just a fairly decent sort of cruise out there, although he will be huffing and puffing a little bit out the back of that. It's going to be Dave Simmons and John Very in the Blue Flame 2 coming out for their run now. Dave from the Hawks Bay, John Very from Napier. So this boat had a few coughs and splutters during qualifying one at the moment. Looks as though they're onto it. Now these guys are a very interesting team. Both got an incredibly, uh, incredibly funny sense of humour between them. And I did notice a, a meeting a few years ago. Dave went the wrong way. John was looking at him. Dave started looking at John and they went the wrong way again. So how they actually found time to be looking at one another to this day and let's be fair they're not exactly the prettiest places I would have thought they'd avoid looking at one another as often as possible but uh, fantastic team effort for these guys, they've got four teams here this weekend and this will be a tight run for Dave Simmons and John Berry and a 52 5.2.686 Ruben Hoxima should be the next boat out. Of course, Ruben in his second ever run on a jet sprint track. The automatic transmission rebuilder from Palmy, Jake Wood from Auckland, the auto electrician. This is a Toyota Supra style engine for Lincoln Automatics, automotive paint and panel. So it'll be interesting to see. Ruben went out. It's only about his fourth uh, run on a track. So he went out pretty easy the first one. Let's see if he picks up the pace just here a little bit. He only stands at about six foot three, this bloke. Well, a little bit heavy on the wheel, but he's going out with a little bit more pace at the moment than we've seen him in the past. If he's anything like his old man, Eric Oxema, who's been around uh, ever since the sport was invented, we are going to see this young man put his foot into it and crash this boat a lot of times in the years to come. But let's hope he's uh, a bit smarter than his old man. So at the moment, looking quite good. I've just been informed that Ruben's father was known as Eric Crash Seema. So Ruben looking really good out here at the moment. I'm really impressed with the way he's just developing a little bit of speed and confidence in this package here. So that is fantastic to see Ruben across the line there with a 60.066. And there's a few uh, rounds of applause up here in the commentary tower. Yes, I tell you, you can have a look at the boys there. Fists are pumping. They are wrapped with that. That's some 20 seconds quicker than his last time out. Oh, that's fantastic to see from the rookies. 
We are now going to see Nick Berryman, number three in the world. His wife, Rochelle Berryman, doing the navigational duties. So the last time out, this boat coughed and spluttered off the line. But whatever that problem was in qualifying round number one, he's no longer apparent. New Zealand Riverjet and Lake, Lake Okatina Wilderness Lodge and Retreat. That rounds out qualifying round number two for the unlimited category. We are going to reset our clocks, reset our timing, and go qualifying round number three for the Group B in just a second. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now moving into the Group B category. Uh, the audio will drop out for a little while. The generator has got a gremlin. We've got to put on a size 12 work boot, kick the generator, lose the gremlin. So we'll uh, be out of audio for just a little while. We'll be back on air as soon as we can. Yeah. 